so this is one of my very favorite or interesting topic to talk about uh, because this is a concept uh, which in performance testing and engineering where we sort of follow we have this in back of our mind but not uh, actually this is being practiced everywhere so what is a chaos engineering for you as the name itself suggests chaos is nothing but uh, something which is very disruptive and causing a lot of uh, issues so uh, ideally when we create a application or a deploy a product we expect everything to go very smooth and uh, everything will be working fine but that's not the case in in production usually what happens is uh, what you expect will never happen will encounter lot many issues than what you expected and you you would have never accounted for it while you're building a product so chaos engineering is a practice of creating it ahead of time and anticipating it so that you're well prepared for it so if i have to give you a technical definition um, it is nothing but intentionally introducing failures into your system and just to make sure how your system is resilient and performance efficient uh, if there are any potential weaknesses or uh, issues you can identify ahead of time so that you can take charge and fix it so that way you are more confident about your product going into production so the goal here is majorly to cause disruption uh, create a scenario which may not be ideal and see how your system reacts and how it is built to handle such a disaster so by doing this you will be having more confidence in your system and also the stakeholders and uh, the other application associated application users all of them will be more confident in in your product so that is the exact need for this chaos engineering um so let's move on so now that we know the definition of what is chaos engineering so why do we actually have to do this um, as a practice in our project there are a couple of advantage of doing this. Um, one of them is to identify the weak points in your system. So when everything is working fine and you expect things to be ideally all working good, then you are not really exposing your weak points. You would never really understand where exactly your system breaks. So by doing this, you'll be able to identify where are those weak points lying in your system and also to ensure the resiliency of your business data. Um, and your product as well. Uh, so in case of any catastrophic failures, you would really want to know how the system um, behaves and the business data is processed and how it is handled at that point. So that is one scenario where you'll be able to uncover. So also the real world events are something it's very hard to simulate in lower environments. Uh, you might account for a few of them. Usually in performance engineering or testing, we we think about a peak load, a spike, or some other variations of uh, testing, but the real world scenarios could be totally different. So this will give us an opportunity to also explore and introduce those scenarios and see how our system is behaving. And also it is important to educate your team about the failures, what they can expect realistically in production. So the entire SDLC process and uh, the team involved in your product development is well aware of uh, how the failures occurs and how they can better be prepared for it uh, and also if you know where it is going to fail um, then there are chances that you can develop some solutions ahead of time or you can put your best team uh, to design something uh, which is much more cost effective so just in case if it does happen in production you're much uh, you're very much prepared for it ahead of time and it is going to cost you very less compared to uh, seeing that for the first time in production and then trying to rectify it. So chaos engineering has its own approach. Uh, there are few steps which is generally followed in order to have this chaos engineering completed. Um, first step is to knowing your steady state. Um, it is very important to know where you stand currently, uh, your steady state, where it is. It needs to be properly tested and analyzed. You need to have those numbers with you. So you know where you are starting from as a baseline. So the steady state is something you would test and ensure when things are going really good, um, how your system behaves when you, when things are really steady, uh, how your system is. So that is the steady state we should be aware of. And as a next step, what you will do is build a hypothesis. Hypothesis is where uh, you really have to go and understand 
uh, hypothesis is where where you'll really design uh, what is that chaos engineering um, concept you are going to introduce what sort of chaos you would like to introduce and hypothetically what will be the impact uh, you would expect and where you would think the impact is going to be in your system and how your system is going to uh, respond to it and what is that uh, you would like to take out from this entire experiment so you need to have this hypothetical situation built out even before you start uh, doing an actual chaos engineering uh, practice so the next step is designing the experiment so there are some tools which we're going to talk about later in this uh, presentation which will help you to do this uh, experiment but you have to really design the experiment very well uh, we call call that as a blast radius um, it is important to know the, the type of chaos you are causing uh, what is the radius of it who all are getting affected and what all systems subsystems are getting affected because of it so it is very important to design your experiment really well so that you're much more prepared and very well thought about uh, the approach you would like to take. So once you are done with designing it, then it's pretty much the conducting the experiment and uh, constantly learning about uh, how your system is behaving, analyzing the result. And then uh, finally, what you would do is uh, you will find some fixes. Of course, it is not possible to uh, find fixes for some uh, hypothetical situation, but um, some basic fixes which can help you to make your system more resilient uh, is advised. So it's an end to end process. Um, you have to follow this in order to do the chaos engineering. So there are some tools available. Uh, we are going to look into three of the most widely used tools. Uh, Gremlin is one. Um, it is a very good platform. Uh, for you to conduct uh, chaos experiments and uh, it has a very uh, well-defined uh, um, experiment styles and you, you will be able to monitor the behavior and analyze the result so that that provides you a much more user-friendly version the gremlin tool is pretty much uh, a leading when it comes to the chaos engineering space so the second tool which is also popular is chaos toolkit so it's an open source toolkit. Um, it will help you to do some chaos engineering experiments. Uh, at last, we have uh, Chaos Monkey. The chaos Monkey is part of Simian Army. This is a suit which is built by Netflix. Um, we have to give credit to Netflix for chaos engineering as a whole because they are the first one to actually start uh, this practice somewhere around 2010. Um, when they actually moved from on on-premise infrastructure to AWS cloud infrastructure, that's when they introduced this concept. And uh, it, from then it has been picked up and used by other uh, organizations as well. So these three um, are very well-known tools in this region. So what we're going to look into next is the types of attack. Each tool may call it a little differently, but uh, it's pretty much the concept is same. So the first sort of attacks you can make is on the resources, be it the CPU or the memory. Uh, you can overload them and see how your system is behaving and also you can put more pressure on the I.O. write and read. And you can also fill up the disk at a specific percentage and see how that is disrupting your overall system stability. Um, the second sort of attacks you can do it, you can do it will be on network. Um, there's a concept of black hole uh, where, it, where it drops all the matching network traffic and uh, it can also inject some latency into the machine um, and uh, it can block a specific DNS servers. So this way, uh, when your network is not working at optimal condition, uh, you will get to know how your system resiliency is built. Um, and at last, specifically on the state, um, of your application that is you can shut down the host completely and you can do something called as a time travel change where the system time will be manipulated the reason for doing this is uh, to ensure your system is um, capable of handling daylight saving changes or if the system time is different than the actual whether that will have any impact on the processing of your request or approvals so those scenarios can be measured at this uh, by using this and uh, also we have something called a process killer 
So this will kill a specific process, could be a microservices or anything else. Uh, then you can analyze how your system is behaving. So in our next slide, uh, we can look into something more specific um, about the process killer. And this is an experiment uh, which is done using a gremlin tool. So here, as you can see, it's a gremlin dashboard. Uh, you have something called attacks where you will be able to create new attack. And from here, you have certain options from infrastructure. Uh, you can select the attack you would like to do. Uh, you have a process killer option directly. You can select that and you will have to give the process name which you want to kill. Um, so the expectation is. Um, so here, when you click on unleash gremlin that's nothing but you start the process so the expectation is once the process is killed um, very specific uh, objective of that process is down and not working anymore the end user should be seeing uh, an error from his side so that's the attack which we are planning to do it at this point so let's see further and uh, here as you can see uh, the user has been given a 500 internal server error because the process is no more working. Uh, so this is intentionally causing a process to go down. Uh, so from here, what you can actually see is analyze the behavior of a user or um, you can halt the attack as just now it's been shown. Uh, so this will help you to understand the user behavior or what else the user might um, go and do in your application. Uh, where else the traffic is getting increased or how quickly uh, you can bring back your uh, host or if you are prepared to have any other services deployed in different regions which can take up this load so all this can be uh, thoroughly checked so you can certify that your application is much more resilient so there are some best practices you should be following um, one of that is to start with uh, a very small radius and then you scale up gradually. So do not go ahead and uh, kill the entire server or something which can cause a major issue. Uh, start very small, slow. And once you gain confidence, you have enough um, statistics at your end, then you can slowly increase uh, the radius of the blast or the experiment. It is indeed um, good to do all this executions test in production. Uh, but if you're starting slow, if you're in an early stage, um, do not do it in production. Start from your uh, lower environments uh, till you build that confidence. And the next one would be to focus more on the measurable outcomes. Um, it's easier to lose focus on the outcomes and go haywire and uh, start causing a lot of chaos without having a specific um, you know, plan or an outcome sorted out. So that will also cause a lot of disruption in the way you have you are designing. So make sure uh, it is it is having an outcome which is more measurable. And next, be uh, more transparent and collaborative. Uh, this is one of the uh, sort of test which is going to impact the entire application. Everyone involved with it will be affected. So it is very important to be transparent and let them know what sort of executions are going on, why you're doing it and uh, include other team members also uh, in the discussion so that it can be more collaborative and more transparent across. Um, do plan for safety. What do we mean by this is um, sometimes when you go much beyond the expected radius of blast, uh, you have to have a plan where so if something really goes bad what is your uh, next step step of action to get back and uh, start serving the customer so do plan for the safety and uh, again this is a continuous learning and improvement process uh, this is recommended to do frequently and uh, you can definitely discuss with your team and come up with a plan how frequently it should be done um, but again, it's an improvement process. The more and more your system is getting built and new features are introduced, the, 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 that much need you will have to do the chaos engineering. So that's it. 
so i hope this session was helpful for you informative uh this is a quick session idea is to uh give a food for thought and um, you know introduce you to a concept where you can start learning more about it um this is a linkedin handle of our association and also my personal linkedin handle feel free to uh, drop a comment or if you have any ideas for our next uh, future webinars um, we are more than welcome to accept it please if you have any suggestion for our future webinars uh, please uh, comment it out uh, and we have a next webinar happening in jan that is going to be on the shift right testing so it is available to register for free in aitp association page so please go ahead and uh, register for that event as well so thank you so much for your time and uh, till we meet next time take care bye